in um, year 11 and 12, um, there is not only, you know, like your modules, your content modules, but also something called working scientifically. So this is really testing your application skills um, alongside your theory skills. And this is what you're really going to be seeing in um, depth studies as well as prac exams. And even sometimes actually in the HSC exams as well in certain questions. So this includes things such as um, creating a hypothesis or um, creating an aim, so that includes questioning and predicting. Planning investigations and conducting investigations is also more the practical side of it, so that includes things such as doing risk assessments, creating methods, um, and also like looking at which materials are easily accessible um, that will help you to achieve your aim for that particular experiment. We also include things such as processing data and information, analyzing it. Um, so that will pretty much include things such as your method as well as your results and discussion. So mainly the, mainly the discussion section um, and the results section because, you know, in your results section, you would be tabulating things. You would be doing graphs as well as um, other kinds of data. Um, representation and analysis um, and alongside that you'd also be looking into in your discussion um, areas of validity reliability and accuracy um, which I'll talk a bit more about later on um, and you would also look at ways to also improve your um, experimental method so that it's um, more accurate or valid or reliable um, when you do it the second time around Throughout your um, year 11 and 12 um, syllabus, you'll also be doing a bunch of problem solving because that's pretty much all questions are, um, and also learn how to write succinct answers and communicate um, you know, using scientific language, but also in a concise manner. So that's pretty much what the working scientifically um, module kind of looks like. Now I'll just do a quick run through as to what each of um, like the different modules include. Starting off with year 11, we have modules one to four. Module one pretty much, which is module one is also the main module that we're going to be focusing on today. Module one pretty much just introduces you to basic cell concepts um, as well as things like cell structure, cell function, biochemical processes and module two does branch off more of that and um it looks more into i think like the organization of um various species and how we um a bit of also like scientific naming as well module three as the name suggests goes a bit more into biological diversity and this is where you kind of look at various theories of evolution um such as darwin's theory of evolution from my memory and module four still continues off of that as well so you look a bit at um certain structures of ecosystems and how they function together and certain relationships that exist within an ecosystem um which i won't really be touching on today but it's pretty interesting to learn i feel like module one and two is more of like i guess like you could say animal based and a anatomy um but module three and module four really just looks at everything in a more broader perspective and um you know just looks at you know the ecosystem and species as a whole rather than focusing on like the inner structures then you have module five to eight module five to eight does use knowledge that you learn in um modules one to four so a lot of um stuff from module one to two overlap in your year 12 syllabus so it's good to make sure that you understand module one to two my school actually did this the other way around when i started year 11 so they started off with module four and then they went backwards so that by the time we went to module one and we started off with um i think we started off with module five um it clearly linked to one another so if your school's not doing that just make sure to revise these two modules before hopping on to um year 12. um so just moving on as to what these modules really are talking about um 
if you look at module five and six, this is really just looking more into DNA, um, the structure of DNA and further biochemical processes such as producing proteins and um, things like that. And then module six looks more at technology. So one common focus within the um, total syllabus of year 11 and 12 is that you're always gonna be focusing on some kind of technology. So it's good to have case studies for specific syllabus dot points. And I'll get into that later. You also have um, module seven and eight. So these modules are pretty fun because they're really just talking about diseases. Um, so module seven pretty much talks about um, infectious diseases. Um, you look at a, a bunch of different um, diseases, how they spread, the symptoms that they present, um, and it's really interesting. And then module eight looks a bit at non-infectious diseases. So these diseases are non-communicable. You can't transfer them to one another, um, from one person to another. And um, you also look a bit at epidemiology. So you look at population dynamics and kind of understand how, um, you know, certain trends are more prevalent in different um, countries and why they also occur. So it's really interesting to understand not only what these diseases are, but also why they happen. What other factors within our society play a role in um, the trends of these kinds of diseases? So yeah, that's pretty much an overall, I guess, um, view of the year 11 and year 12 syllabus. And throughout your working scientifically skills, so alongside this, you'll also have your four modules, like I mentioned, and each module is around 60 hours. That's the amount of time you'll be spending that in school. And then you also have something called depth studies. So depth studies are pretty much just like um, a research task that your school gives you and um, around 15 hours will need to be taken to do the research task at least in school but sometimes what schools may do is that they may um, take some time outside of um, you know your study time in school itself and they may ask you to um, do the depth study at home as well. And if you guys do want um, question banks as well as biology notes, here are the QR codes so you can um, access it. And I believe that this recording will be accessible, I think, for around a year. And um, you'll also be given access to um, the slides as well that I'm presenting today. So now that we've focused a bit on um, how the syllabus works, it's important to also understand how to read the syllabus. So like I mentioned, there is typically, like how the syllabus is structured is that you have your modules. In your modules, there'll be inquiry questions. And under those inquiry questions, typically there's around two to three from my memory, um, you have like a set of dot points that are pretty much like your syllabus outlines. So it's important to not only take care of the syllabus um, dot points, but also look at what the inquiry question is asking you. Um, and the reason why you have to take note of the inquiry questions is because the inquiry question is set out so that by learning all the syllabus dot points, you'll be able to answer the inquiry question. You can also take the inquiry question as a way um, to test your knowledge on something. So for example, um, if you look at reproductive processes, um, and you learn that thoroughly, you should be able to answer how reproduction ensures the continuity of a species. Um, and that's how you kind of can test your knowledge. If you can see a gap um, and you can't explain certain things, then you realize, you'll realize that um, you know, you're missing something and that um, you need to go back and further on um, revise your knowledge. Um, so that's how I would kind of take note of the inquiry questions. I'd also look a bit at um, the working scientifically skills as well. So it's really important to look at um, the verb that is being analyzed over here. In this case, um, if we look at this example, it's asking assess risks, consider ethical issues and select appropriate materials and technologies when designing and planning an investigation. So there's a bunch of verbs involved in this. But the main ones are assess, 
consider, design, plan, right? And select, I guess. So assess is the main one over here. And um, when you go to the Nesta website, it will show you um, a bunch of what the HSC verbs are and the definitions for them as well. It's really important to understand what those verbs are. They're called directive verbs. Um, and also look at what it's trying to ask you. So like look at what the content side of it. So this is really just looking at designing and planning and investigation. So it's looking at things like methods, what materials are you choosing? Have you done a risk assessment and have you assessed that risk assessment? Like as in, have you analyzed the risks and have you made a judgment on it? So these are the things that you'd have to consider in a working scientifically skill dot point because they're not only tested in your practical exams, but ultimately they're also tested in your trials as well as your HSC. And that brings me to my next stop point, um, paying attention to wording. So like I've said, directive verbs are really important. And you can see here that each, um, I guess, stop point within the slide has a different directive verb. And you can see here that there is investigate, there is evaluate, and there is also model. So these verbs also um, have, I guess, like a lot of meaning to them um, when you're doing your um, responses. 